church. Uh, other than that, you can read what's in the bulletin or up on the screen, and we'll go from there. I know Pastor Monica has some uh, thank yous that she'd like to read to us. It's always nice that people appreciate what we do for them. Uh, this is from uh, CSO, and it says, with special thanks and sincere appreciation. And then handwritten, it says, thank you for your generous donations to CSO. And that's from Megan Bear, the CEO. And then from PCC Corner of Hope, they are praying for us, and it's a privilege to intercede for our area churches as we gather together each morning for prayer. May God use you in Clark's Grove United Methodist Church for his glory today and always. And I thought that was nice that they're keeping us in their prayers. And then from Pocono Plateau, says, your gift will come in handy as we finish up fall and move into the holiday months. Our last Pocono Plateau sponsored retreat finished up this past weekend. We had youth up here to enjoy a fall gathering complete with seasonal outdoor activities. And then this past month, the new High Ropes Adventure Course was completed. Training staff will start soon. I was just looking at Rob to see if he was on those high ropes. <laughs> just teasing. And this is just to give us an idea of the efforts at Pocono Plateau and what our generosity does to help them. And you are eminently grateful, they are eminently grateful for our faith in them. So I thought it was important to read those thank you cards. Are there any other announcements this morning, Susan? I can, I can tell you from experience um, at the training care center. Um, we can, I, I volunteer there for a while. And they come in every morning, have help early, and have a prayer time. And they do pray for their They have a list of churches that they pray for every single day. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It's, it's nice to know that someone else is praying for us because I think sometimes we need it just as much as we're praying for others. I don't know, did Rob mention it, but there's a, a, mug, a mug up here that's been sitting around, and if it looks like yours, it probably is. <laughs> so... Uh, please. I think it might be Greg. Oh, that's ours. Oh, that's yours? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we have the owner. Are, are there any other announcements? Yeah, while well, I'm up over here. Um, so, Oasis, the nonprofit organization in Shemokin for recovering addicts and alcoholics, is sponsoring a Friendsgiving. This coming Saturday at 5 p.m., if anyone is interested or feels the calling to go and help, go and help, go and eat, enjoy the fellowship that they have there as well. But it's not easy um, when you're dealing with addiction and things like that and not having a family to go to to enjoy a Thanksgiving dinner with. So there's going to the bulletin things on the bulletin out there to okay located below the library in Schmokin, side entrance down the ramp okay that sounds great thank you any other any Okay, thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, if there are no other announcements, we'll 
uh, pause for quiet meditation as our prelude is being played. Thank you, Anne. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please stand if you're able, and we will sing our praise songs. Um, the first one is the Cares Chorus, and we have it on the screen. Okay. <laughs> to the Lord. It's okay, Anne. <laughs> I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made and will rejoice for he has made. Glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Thank you.
Thank you, and please remain standing for the call to worship. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Anne. Will you join me in our call to worship as we read this, read this responsibly, as opposed to irresponsibly? <laughs> the Lord is continually creating something new. Through all this change, God is with us. Praise be to God who continually blesses us. And our hearts, our voices, and our spirits sing God's praises. Amen. And at this time, we'll ask the children to come forward, those young in age and young in heart. It's 
great to be able to stop when you plan a thing that's wrong and you're able to do something else instead of doing the thing that's wrong and then sing the song. So I can stop when I want to and I can stop when I wish. Now I know there's something deep inside that keeps us from what we can do. For a girl can become a young woman and a boy can someday be a man. Yeah, so one day you'll be a man and these ladies will be women. about the things that you can do instead of being angry, okay? Yes. You can be nice. You can be nice, yes. Go ahead. You can like give something away to another person that's in need. Right, you can give something to somebody that's in need. I like that. Good ideas. Yes. Okay, let's pause for a word of prayer. Dear God, we ask you to be with us even when we're mad and help us that we can think of something better to do, like giving something to someone that's in need or going outside and playing or catching a ball instead of being mad. For this we know you can help us too. We ask for your strength. We pray this. Amy, don't go too far. Choir singing next. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Would you please join me now with the prayer of confession, either up on the screen or in your bulletin? Merciful God, we come before you this day as those who are often afraid to confess all the many ways in which we have disappointed and betrayed you. You have given us continual opportunities to serve and love others, but we have withdrawn into lives of selfishness and greed. We have turned our backs on others in need. We have denied the gifts you have given us. Where can we turn now that we have run from you? Your voice calls to us to come home, to come to the unafraid, to receive forgiveness and healing. Open our hearts this day to receive these magnificent blessings. Help us understand the many ways in which you love us and help us share that love with all those whom we meet. For we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our words of assurance tell us that even though we have turned away from God, yet God is faithful to us. We are believed of God and recipients of God's love and blessings. Rejoice, children of God, for God's mercies are ever before us. Amen. At this time, we'll go to our joys and concerns, and I'm going to start with Susan with what was mentioned in Sunday school. No birthdays or anniversaries? Okay, so we'll sing happy birthday to Shannon since she won't be here next week. that your birthday is wonderful. Okay, any others? Yes. From Okay, so that was Mary and Donna. Okay, any other joys or concerns? Yes. Okay. Susan. Okay. Yes. As being a group now in the Hopkins Square. D, D, D. Sorry. Yes. My girlfriend, Martha Shaw, she fell in town on Wednesday. Oh my goodness. It must, must have been quite a fall. Any other joys or concerns at this time? Bonnie. Oh, 
Okay, thank you. G and M. Okay, any other joys or concerns? Okay. Okay, let us pause just for quiet meditation as we uh, pray for our joys and concerns and those on our prayer list and those that we name quietly in our hearts. Let us pray. How shall we thank God for the many blessings that God has given to us? Shall we offer mighty songs of praise? Shall we give of our abundance? Shall we again pledge our loyalty to God through lives of service and compassion? Yes, in all these things we shall offer our praise and our commitment to God. Each new day, each new opportunity, is a blessing given freely to us. God's new heaven and new earth reside in us. We have come before God today proclaiming our faith. We have brought the names and situations of those near and dear to us before the throne of grace, seeking God's healing and redeeming love. We place our lives in God's care. In all of this, we are part of God's new creation meant to bring hope and forgiveness to all. Open our hearts, Lord. We want to be your agents of peace and joy. Open our lives, Lord, and help us work for you in this world so that in the world to come, we may have eternal peace. Let us pray now as our Father has taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll give of our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us, and send us to those who hunger and thirst. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to have a tribute to our veterans. Okay, Sean, you're doing great. Let's fold another triangle. You know, this reminds me of the time that I was first drafted in the military and that sergeant made me and my brother go out there every morning to fold the flag until we got it right. Like this, Grandpa? You're doing great. One more time. There you go. Your brother, Jeff? Yes, uh, you never had a chance to meet Jeff. What happened? Well, he died a long time ago. Is that him? That's him. I know your life on earth was trouble and only you could know the pain you weren't afraid to face the devil you were no strange So go rest high on that Most of us here have probably had a family member serve, and when you do, it's, it's very difficult because from day to day, you're not sure if they're going to be coming home. I have a poem that I'd like to read. It's called The Soldier, and it's by General Douglas MacArthur. When the country is in need, it has always been the soldier it's the soldier, not the newspaper reporter who has given us freedom of the press. It's the soldier, not the post, who has given us freedom of speech. It's the soldier, not the campus organizer who has given us freedom to demonstrate. It's the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves under the flag. It's the soldier who calls upon to defend our American way of life. I'd like to ask our soldiers to come forward at this time. If our soldiers would come forward at this time.
was in Vietnam, part of a bus sergeant, B-5. I was there for a year. And I was stationed in Colorado Springs afterwards to raise money from his Vietnam friends. And I was already there. Again, thank you to all of our servicemen uh, that have served and who are currently serving. Thank you very much for that privilege that you give to us. Um, let's continue by singing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Please stand if you're able. And we'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 5. <laughs>
Thank you, and please be seated. Scriptures today, you'll find them on the screen. Galatians 5, verse 1, and then 13 through 15. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh but through love be servants of one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed by one another. And now John, chapter 8, verses 31 to 36. Jesus then said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been in bondage to anyone. How is it that you say you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, Truly, truly I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not continue in the house forever. The son continues forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. May God bless the hearing of his words. Our message today is entitled, The Gratitude Attitude face to face with Jesus in awe of his grace. It's hard not to think of grace because for some reason around this time of year, people seem to change. They gain a whole new gratitude attitude. Even if it's only for a short time, we have much to be grateful for. Those who defend our freedom, protect our unalienable rights, even gave up their lives for the sake of others. There is thankfulness for those who taught us, raised us, and helped us grow in our faith. We could mention so much more, but let's suffice to say that we're thankful for the gratitude attitude in each and hope that someday it becomes an all-the-time thing. There's a modern parable that circulates usually around this time every year. It's about a man whose wife left him. He was utterly depressed. He lost his faith in himself and faith in other people in God. He found no joy in living whatsoever. One rainy morning, this man went to the local cafe in this small neighborhood to have breakfast. There were several people at the diner, but no one spoke. Everyone seemed to be miserably hunched over their counter, dejectedly stirring their coffees. In one of the small booths along the window was a young mother with a little girl. They had just been served their food when the little girl loudly piped up, Mommy! We should say our prayers. Well, the waitress who had just served their breakfast heard the little girl, and she said, Sure, honey, go ahead. Will you say the prayer for us? And the waitress turned and looked at the rest of the occupants in the restaurant and said, Bow your heads, please. And surprisingly, one by one, heads were bowed. The little girl then bowed her head, folded her hands and said, God is great, God is good, and we thank him for our food. Amen. That prayer 
changed everything. People began to talk with one another. All of a sudden, said the man, my whole frame of mind improved because of that little girl. I started to thank God for all that I have instead of what I didn't have. My gratitude index improved exponentially. We all were so much in awe of God's grace that day as we came face to face with Jesus through that little child. And that's how God works, how he reaches us through the actions of others. Are you thankful? Amazing, isn't it? If we wrote down each day all we receive, like an open-mouthed tourist at a loss for words, we'd be amazed at the bounty and blessings we take for granted. Now here's the thing though, there are many people that are never grateful for anything they experience or for anything of any kind of circumstance that they're in. They become so exhausted from being bombarded by and griping about the stuff of life that they forget about what really matters. They spread, they spread that misery to others. It's kind of exasperating and well, it's contagious too. For the grateful, Sundays are a good reminder why we get together. It's because of how life is and the one who gave up his life for us, regardless of the naysayers. We're thankful for God's love for the world that we're united not by gender or race or economic status or political affiliation, but by faith, a faith that God created in all. It sustains all and that will redeem all, all because of God's love and sacrifice. David Loos speaks of a friend who when asked how she is, she replies, I'm grateful. What a wonderful response, I'm grateful. Usually we hear, oh, I'm fine, or I'm pretty good, or you might hear I'm great or I'm living the dream. Anyway, David's friend chose her words with care. I'm grateful. She wanted to make a point that gratitude is not only a response to good fortune, but also an attitude and a way of life. Gratitude is indeed a response to the blessings of life, but it is also a choice to see those blessings to name them, and to express our gratitude in word and deed. Giving voice to gratitude may carry consequences, for as we express our gratitude, we affect those around us, even shape the reality in which we live. I think that it is a good thing because not only are we sharing our thankfulness with others, but just maybe changing the way they approach the situations as well. It's our choice of what emotions we give voice to. Do we answer anger with anger as selfish protection or empathy? Do we try to understand why someone was angry and then be thankful for their honesty? Do we express frustration when we fail or gratitude for what we've learned from that experience. These are the choices among others that confront us in life. It is our choice to live gratefully so that we see each day as God's gracious gift. That seems like a tall order, one loaded with uncertainties, yet it must be. Gratitude, like all of our other options, becomes easier as we, as we live it. Gratitude along with faith, hope, and love and commitment are not inborn traits. They have some, yes, yeah, some people have some and others don't. Rather, gratitude is more like a muscle that can be strengthened over time. 
And as you practice giving thanks and more frequently share your gratitude, you not only grow, but become an example for others. More than that, you create a climate that promotes a gratefulness and encourages those around you to see those blessings as well. Rudyard Kipling, the great British poet whose writings have blessed, have blessed us, was a very famous gentleman in his time and made a great deal of money. A newspaper reporter came up to him once and said, Mr. Kipling, I just read where someone calculated that the money you make from your writings amounts to over $100 a word. Well, Mr. Kipling raised his eyebrows and said, really? I certainly wasn't aware of that. The reporter cynically reached out into his pocket, pulled out a $100 bill and gave it to Kipling and said, here's a $100 bill, Mr. Kipling. Now give me one of your $100 words. Well, Mr. Kipling looked at the $100 bill for a moment, took it, folded it up, put it in his pocket and said, thanks. <laughs> the word thanks is certainly a valuable word, maybe even priceless. This one word changes the way that we view life. Displaying the gratitude attitude is contagious. We must work hard at being that type of person. Instead of complaining and whining about everything, we're to look at the good in all that we experience. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 15, verse 18 tells us, no matter what happens, always be thankful for this is God's will for you. Thank you should always be our first response to our recognition of God's providence in our lives. John Wesley lived it, recognized it daily, and prayed about it constantly. He shared much of what he received with others just like Jesus. Gratitude is grounded in God's grace, not in the circumstances that surround us but the nature of God's love. So love is the basis for thanksgiving. Best of all, it's his promise to be with us, our Emmanuel. Wesley found that gratitude leads us out of a glass half empty to a glass half full. A positive spirit lifts us up and helps us to see that God cares knows, and loves. Thanksgiving is the evidence that we love him. God's grace and love gives us the stamina to live a thankful life. The same goes for those who look after us, our first responders, the National Guard, our armed forces, our saints. We thank them for standing firm and rescuing our liberties from the jaws of the enemy. Charles Wesley wrote a hymn that is in our hymnal. It's entitled, And Are We Yet Alive? that sums up our thanks for these men and women. Verse 1 says, And are we yet alive and see each other's face? Glory and thanks to Jesus give for his almighty grace. What troubles have we seen? What mighty conflicts past? Fightings without and fears within, since we assembled last. Let us take up the cross till we crown, till the crown obtain, and gladly reckon all things lost so we may Jesus gain. There's a simple concept at work here. It has been with us for centuries, and that is, our concern for others. That even in the face of devastation and destruction, we can hold on to faith, not for self-preservation or for the promise of a life free from suffering, but from the hope that life is always bigger than what people can see 
and love is always worth living for and dying for. That's what is so awe-inspiring in this message. That's what we stand for in open-mouthed wonder. Not the, great, not the created beauty of our hands, but the willingness to live a life of love. Thankfulness for the grace God filters through to each of us to share with others. We have the power to give voice to the things that we are grateful for. So why waste time being frustrated? God is still at work both in us and through us for the well-being of this world. Find ways to have a gratitude attitude each day. The best kind of grateful is the kind that you feel in your heart and then by sharing it with others. May God bless you with the hearing of this word. Thankful always for his loving grace. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Monica. Would you please stand if you're able and we'll sing our final hymn. There is power in the blood and I believe the not found in your hymnals, the words will be on the screen. for our closing benediction. We go from this place rejoicing in God's love. We commit our lives to serving God by serving others. God's love has made us new. God's peace goes with us in all that we say and do. Amen.